Welcome back to Stu Structures. We're here for video number 16 in the building of the beanery, so stay tuned. Okay, so in this segment of building the beanery, we're going to start connecting walls and putting floors in the next building back and uh, making this smaller structure into a bigger structure. Uh, we're going to continue with manufacturing walls for the hotel buildings back behind, maybe start getting some windows cut out in those buildings. Um, just a lot of little chores along the way. So we'll see what we can get into in this video and how far we can get. So stay tuned and we'll get right into it. The first thing I really want to jump into is gluing this building together. I've been a long time wanting to do this and I'm finally to the point that I can. Uh, you've seen the wall that I laid out before and of course all the finished walls. So I'm just coming back here and I glue the wall or the floor in first, let it set up overnight and then glue one wall and set, up, set most of the day and come back and do the other one. And these two roof supports that you saw that I had cut out for before for that first building back, uh, I did have to trim off the edges just a little bit to get them to fit in here the way they should. But uh, then I went ahead and glued those into place. Uh, the one up against the brick of the previous building, I had to clean the brick just a little bit to get glue, glue adhesion in there. And once those two walls are on, uh, there's two roofs in this next section back that come and meet together in the middle of the, this bigger building back here. So I need to create a center wall. So first I just cut this big piece of plastic and you see me fitting it. And on top of that there needs to be a gutter where the two roofs come and meet on top of that wall. So I'm just cutting these gutter pieces here and gluing them together to form a gutter. And then I come back and glue that on top of the wall and then glue some supports for angles that uh, where that, that would meet the floor and, and to give me a good 90 degree upright. And uh, just go ahead and, and paint that black. It'll act as a, as, a, as a view block inside as well and clean all the edges that are going to meet up with the floor and with the brick wall there and the brick hotel wall that'll meet back behind so that I get good glue adhesion in that as well. And then once I get that glued into place that's uh, the beginnings of getting all everything ready for the roof structure for this next building back here. And uh, it's really nice to see all this come together finally. The next thing I want to do is use this uh, raw sienna paint and paint the floor in this building. As I go on and do more and more with the roofs, even though some of them are removable, it's just going to be harder to come back in here and paint that. And for what little bit you're going to be able to see through the windows, I just don't want it to look like there's snow on the floor in here. I want to tone it down. So I just did a couple of real brief... Uh, coatings on this with just a real wide brush there's imperfections but you know from the outside looking in all those will look like you know more of a board imperfection in the colors of the board than anything else and then I can come back and start adding the supports for the roofs. Uh, this third building back, I'm going to make this uh, a permanent roof and not removable because I can get to it from uh, the back side when I remove these other roofs. So I just glued in these supports here to uh, be able to mount the styrene roof onto. And for the next buildings back, it's actually two separate buildings side by side and when I laid out the walls, uh, for the brick for the hotel, I figured out the angles for the pitch of those roofs and uh, the flat roof comes down and meets this other roof that I just showed you on the third building. So I'm cutting these uh, supports and pieces to be able to go ahead and start putting together the two individual roof support structures that are removable that will sit down in that next uh, building or two buildings that are side by side that come down into that center gutter work. And after I've got the pieces cut, I just fit each one of them down into those sections because it's, it's not perfectly square. It's off just a tiny bit. So I measure each section and glue the outside frames together. And you can see that one back corner, I notched out where I put the uh, corner support in for that building because it just didn't give me enough height to put the whole thing in there the way it was. 
And then I come back and add the second part of the structure to that, the ridge line and the two angles that come down and meet this flat roof at the very end. And then I come back and support that with some more um, styrene uh, pieces in here. When I did the first roof out there, there just wasn't enough support under it. So I beefed this one up just a little bit more so I wouldn't get any sagging in the plastic like I did in the first roof. And then we start working on the windows in the hotel. I uh, came through and laid it out according to the pictures that I had. And remember before I showed you that I lined the, the heights of the windows up with the other three-story building. And you can also see the, uh, the ridges where I, I measured for the roof when I figured that out. And I come back and use my Dremel and cut these holes and then come back with my nibbler, the same as I did all the other brick walls, and uh, just nibble out rough openings that are close to the edge. And then I'll come back with a knife and clean those out just a little bit and uh, go on from there. But I want to get a good start on this and uh, th this gives me that to start with as we uh, at least start laying pieces together we can start to see what the building's going to look like at this point i still need to do 45s on these walls so they'll meet in the corners and the windows this time i want to pre-paint these it just it's going to save me some work and time as i come through and uh, set all these in and i just used a black rattle can to do these with a flat black i'm going to have to clean the outside edges off with a knife before i set them back in the brick to glue them to get good adhesion uh, but the majority of the painting will be done if i have to come back and touch it up it'll be minimal and then the uh, just keeping on casting uh, all these chimney pieces uh, a couple of the mold little tiny molds that I made for excess uh, pieces just didn't work so I cut them off the molds and just continue to use the rest but here you can see a few barrels and a few crates and each time I cast I cast once a day and demold them the next day I get a big chimney a small chimney and some crates and barrels to use for scenery material now I do have to come back and clean these up. They're not the perfect mold, but they're okay. And it doesn't take a whole lot of cleaning on them. And here you can see the first two with just the first basic layer of paint on them. Now while rummaging through all my stuff, I found this, uh, it's actually part of a yard arm off a ship model. And it just to me it looks like a much better flagpole than the piece of styrene that I had glued on there before. So I took off the other piece and mounted this on there. And there's some metal bands on it about the points that the ropes would be tied off of. And uh, I just thought it was a better flagpole. And I also found this uh, waving flag in my stuff. It has a little bit of a sheen to it. I had just put a little bit of glue between the layers too to make it a little bit better looking. And I'll probably just do some flat paint on it um, to give it a flat and take away the sheen. And one of the other things we need to do for this building are uh, down uh, pipes for the gutter work. And they do go in the corners, which will hide some of the corners of the, where the brick meet as well. But I just the closest thing I had to what I needed was this 1 16th inch styrene rod uh, just in this package from Evergreen. So what I'm doing is just taking that rod and just heating it up a little bit and getting the bends that I need because it'll fit set back against the brick wall but where it comes out and meets under the gutters it, it steps out a little bit. So in, instead of just uh, using other plastic parts and gluing stuff together I'm just heating this up and doing this this way. Now I want to couple, put a couple people inside the doors looking out the windows of the building. So as I was going through looking through my stuff, I, I just found several people with baggage that would work around the hotel and some baggage carts and uh, you know, just various stuff like that that I'll just start painting over time. But I do want to get two people painted in advance to use behind glass and open doors. Now while I was doing all those little things, I continued just to come back and put pieces together for both of these roofs on the second, uh, the fourth building back here. So this is just a piece, a picture of those just setting in place. There's nothing holding them, and uh, if I touch them wrong, they're going to drop down to the floor level. Uh, but it gives you an idea of how the roof line works out in this next building back. And then I'm just going to do a pan here of the building as it sets right now at this period of time. Now you can see the third hotel, the first hotel building kind of just taped into place back behind that. And then we have another one that connects even on back behind that with a little 
one story building in between them. But it gives you a really good grasp of uh, how this building is going and how big it's going to end up when it's all said and done. Okay, so there you have another segment of building the beanery. Uh, it's really starting to come together really well now and even with those next ones just taped on behind you can start to get a better feel of how big this structure is. Remember in between this next one that I had taped on and then there's another one just slightly as na more narrow than that on back behind that but in between those two is an overhead bridge that goes between those two structures with a one-story building underneath of it. So, you know, there's still a good little bit to add on to this at this point. I can't be using my turntable here pretty soon on my table to put all this on just to turn it around to give you a glimpse of it. Um, anyway, it's getting exciting. I, I really like where this bu building is going. Uh, the new roof supports for the third structure back, you know, they're kind of thrown together. I mean, they're good. I'm going to beef them up with a little more glue. And I mean, they're okay because once the roof is on, you're not going to see any of this. You know, there's, there's just a couple of the uh, structure parts that I put on there that aren't, you know, exactly at 90 degree angles. That's not that big a deal. Um, but I do like the new roof pole. Uh, we're continuing to uh, mold a big and a small chimney every single day. So a few more days and we'll have all the chimneys molded. Uh, I didn't get this one glued on for this particular shot that's on that first building that we built. But I did get it cleaned up and we're starting to paint it. And the, the um, pipes that come out of the top of the chimneys just did not mold very well. So what I'm going to do is cut those off at where that mortar cap is and drill them and just put another piece of pipe down into it and glue them in. Uh, it's not a big deal and I think it'll look really nice and clean on the top. Uh, these were terracotta pipes that came up through these chimneys to allow the smoke to escape and, uh, and then they were all sooty and you know dark colored anyway. Uh, but in any case, um, like and share these videos. Uh, there's a lot of people out there, I, I know I say this every single time, but there are people out there that would uh, like to know how to do some of this. And uh, there are people that follow me that ask questions and stuff. So I'm, I'm glad that somebody is getting something from this. And if, like I said before, if nothing else, just to jump out there and start scratch buildings of buildings. Uh, they don't have to be this elaborate. They could be a little outhouse for all that matter just to learn what you're doing and get your skills down to where you can move up to bigger and bigger buildings. Uh, there's a lot of rivet counters out there which probably shake their head at some of the things with this building I got going on but I'm not really an ex really tight uh, ruled uh, rivet counter. Uh, I mean there's some things on this building that I've changed throughout times that have changed throughout times on the buildings that I'm kind of playing with because I just like what they add to the structure even though they didn't exist exactly as they, I have them on here during my time period that I'm modeling. Um, but anyway, uh, everything is coming together. It's really starting to show really well and uh, I'm really pleased with it. So anyway, besides liking and sharing these videos, subscribe. Hit there's a little red button underneath this video as you're watching on YouTube that says subscribe. Just push that button and you'll be subscribed to my channel. And then right beside of it is a little bell. If you click on that bell, then every time I have a new episode come up, then you'll be notified when it comes out and you can watch the video um, and catch keep up with the series. And uh, you know, it won't be too long. We'll be finishing with this building and moving on to another building. Uh, I think I'm going to put a, uh, a little short video up in the next couple of weeks about some of the other buildings we need to build for this railroad yard. Um, while we are condensing some things in this yard a little bit, most of the buildings I'm trying to build so I can replicate the downtown yard and part of the uh, uh, rip tracks out the far end of the other yard um, pretty much as they were. Uh, so all these buildings are going to be duplicates of the originals to the best of my ability. Um, I, I want everything to have the flavor of Grafton. I want somebody to walk in and look at this and say, wow, that's Grafton in West Virginia. Um, so in any case, uh, go ahead and subscribe like I mentioned and uh, grab some trains or scratch building materials and start gluing some stuff together and uh, experiment and learn and uh, build yourself some buildings and happy model railroading.